So we're talking about you're welcome tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, we talked about being thankful last right last week, right? Thank fool. Okay. So you're wondering why did I make you listen to the song that some of you love and some of you hate? Well, I love that song because it's so interesting. At the beginning, he makes her say thank you, and then he's like, "Oh, you're welcome." He tricks her into saying thank you, right? And then the whole song, he's he's alluding to the fact that she should be welcome, right? Because of all the things I did for you. Like, you're welcome. But she didn't even care what was going on, right? Because she was like in this fog. He was kind of tricking her, right? And it's kind of the same way uh, as you joke with people, right? At work sometimes, there's somebody that can't do something and I make a fool of them and I go over and I do it and then I'm like, you're welcome, right? Like, I'm not really, he's not really thankful, but I say you're welcome. So why is it you're welcome when we're talking about thanks? Everyone say, thank you. You're welcome. See, it comes right after when you say thank you, okay? So we're going to talk more about that later, about the you're welcome. So just hold on to that thought and start thinking to yourself, what does it even mean to say the words, you're welcome, right? When I started this message, I was thinking, what does that even mean? So hold on to that because first we're going to talk about thank you because it comes before welcome. So question tonight is, are you thankful? It's really close. Are you thankful? Why or why not? First off, before I get started, uh, I missed you all last week. If you didn't know I wasn't here, uh, we, were, we were infected with the COVID. So uh, we are now clear and free, and I missed you guys last week. I'm so glad to be back here. Um, so before I miss that, I want to tell you guys, because I always miss it when I'm not here. So are you thankful, right? I'm thankful to be here tonight, right? I'm thankful to be here tonight. Truly and honestly, I'm thankful. So when I started this sermon, I thought to myself, am I thankful? And then I put it in generic setting, not talking about you guys, but just the kids and people around us in America. Are they thankful? Right? What does it mean in America to be thankful? That was the question I ran it on. I think in the standard in America is we have so much to be thankful for that we miss the message of what being thankful really is. They take God out of the equation because we have so much to be thankful without him in their brains is what they're thinking, right? What am I saying? It can be easy to say I'm thankful because of all the goodness in my life, right? I have this, I have this, I don't have all these other issues, correct? And it leads us to a place where my thankfulness is dependent on the things I have, right? And where I'm at in life. My thankfulness is not dependent on God in America, just speaking generally, not pointing fingers at you guys. My thankfulness is dependent on where I'm at and what I have. Can we agree on that? Right? We're coming up on Thanksgiving, which leads us into Christmas, right? And people are thankful at Christmas because they get all these gifts, right? They get all these presents, all these earthly possessions, right? Our thankfulness is not always based on what God created thankfulness to be. That's what I want to talk about first, is are you thankful in the God kind of way? So I would ask the question, would I still be thankful even if I had lost everything and everything in my life changed and I had nothing to Andrew's name? I had nothing right? It's a hard question to ask. If I had nothing, would I still be thankful? If I were to say that, then I would identify with the fact that my thankfulness should come from my understanding of my relationship with God. That's where my thankfulness comes from. Let's say it a different way. Thankfulness equals knowing God. Does that kind of make sense? My thankfulness is based on the fact that I know God. Thank you so much for this Play-Doh. Oh, bummer. Uh, so, I am thankful that Plato is gone. No, uh, thankfulness is equal to knowing God. How much I know God equates to how thankful I am with where I'm at, correct? So, there's a verse I want to talk about tonight. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, always be joyful. That's easy, right? Always be joyful. You know what I mean? Oh, let's start there. Always be joyful. Man, what does it mean to be joyful? Never stop praying and be thankful in all circumstances. What? Thankful in all circumstances. That's what we're talking about. If my thankfulness is dependent on what's going on around me, then I can't be thankful in all circumstances, correct? For this is God's will for you to belong in Christ Jesus. This verse... 
pulls out of the word that joyful right from the beginning, right? It says, be joyful always. Does that mean that God desires for you all to be joyful? What do you think? You guess. Well, let me tell you tonight, if you're guessing, God has designed us as humans to always be joyful. But what does joy mean is the question, right? That's what we're going to talk about here in a little bit. Don't forget that. So if God's hope for us is to be in joy, then joy is based on being thankful on where you are. True thankfulness is not uh, about what's going on around us or what we have. True thankfulness is found at, by looking at what God is doing in your life. Right? It says in the Psalms, a lot of the Psalms talk about praise the Lord. Right? So it says in Psalms 106.1, Praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. That's why we give thankfulness to God, because he endures forever. God is with us no matter what circumstances we're in, right? Even if our circumstances change, we should still be thankful. So, back to the COVID, right? So we got COVID last week. <clears throat> no, we really did. I had a positive test for COVID. And so, I know, is that crazy? No, I'm totally clear now. So COVID, right? Was I thankful to get COVID? No. But I just said that I should be always joyful, and no matter what the circumstance, I should be thankful to God. So should I be thankful that I got COVID? Okay. No, you see, he's, he's pointing to kind of where I'm going. You're good. What's up, Raquel? All right, so, so there's, okay, yeah, yeah. All right, so <laughs> should I be thankful about getting COVID, right? In the eyes of the world, right, I now have a sickness. I still currently can't smell or taste anything, which is the worst. Uh, by the way, if you get COVID, don't eat McDonald's because it tastes disgusting when you can't taste it. Um, yeah, no, uh, so I can't taste anything. I couldn't go to work, so that means we didn't get paid. Um, I was sick, obviously, so I didn't feel good. I was tired. So looking at the circumstances, I shouldn't be thankful, correct? Yeah. But thankfulness is based on your perspective sometimes, right? So based on my relationship with God, then I looked at it and I said, what's going on here? You know, like, you know, why did I get COVID? This is the worst. I'm not in a joyous position, right? But when I change my perspective, right, when I look at the relationship when I, that I have with God, it changes, Right? Because I am always running, I'm always busy, and the, I got to spend 10 solid days with my wife that we never get to do, right? I never get to stay home with my kid and just hang out. For 10 days, I just got to sit home and hang out with my wife. And you know what the cool thing is? Is God still provided for us. Even though I didn't go to work, we didn't miss any bills, we didn't have anything that we couldn't pay for, right? So when I changed my perspective of what thankfulness is, then yeah, I was thankful for last week even though my circumstances were something I wouldn't naturally be thankful for. So there's a verse that says in 1 Chronicles 16, 8 through 9, it says, Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Sing to him, yes, sing the praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Right? So if you're thankful, the purpose of being thankful sometimes is that you can you can give praise to God so that other people can see how good God is. So that, that's why I want to share that COVID story with you tonight, is I want to tell you guys that I am thankful for that last week, even though circumstances weren't exactly what I wanted. So as we move on, keep that thought of my thankfulness is dependent on my perspective sometimes, right? So now I want to move on to the fact of are we when we ask God for things, if we're going through a hard season, we ask God for things. Are we asking God for things out of a heart of thankfulness or are we asking God out of a heart of anger or fear or things like that? So it says in Philippians 4, 7, 4 through 7, it says, always be full of joy in the Lord. There it is again. Always be full of joy. Must be important, right? I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Here it is. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. So don't worry. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Thank God for all he has done. 
Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Now, that's a lot to kind of comprehend. I'm going to break it down a little bit now, and then we're going to break it down a little bit later. Everyone still with me? You still following me? All right. So, again, to be full of joy is brought up. And then it says to thank him for what he has done, that he will produce peace in us. How? How does it produce peace in us? That's the question. How do we have this joy? How does it produce peace? And how can we be thankful? I have another story for you. We're going to come back to this verse in a second. So by now, you all know that I think Maddie is the coolest person in the world. Anyone else agree with me? Anyone else think Maddie is just the coolest kid? I know. Isn't she the best? So she's always learning and she's always growing. So she's getting at this stage now where she's trying to figure out what words mean. Okay? So now she says things like, I have it, because she wants it right? Um, and so we were trying to teach her proper things. We were trying to teach her what? When I give you something, you say, uh -huh. and then if you give me something, I say thank you, and she says, you're welcome, right? Pretty easy concept, but for an 18-month-old, it's pretty confusing. Thank you, welcome, when do I use it? Okay, so Halloween, she's 18 months old, and we're trying to get her to tell you thank you to people when she gets the candy, right? First house we go up to, she gets the candy, what she say? You're welcome, right? <laughs> Not thank you. She says, you're welcome. Okay? Go to the next house. I'm like, Maddie, say thank you. And she's like, you're welcome. I'm like, oh, man. And that went pretty much the whole night. And the last person, she, went, she walked up to the house, and this lady was so sweet. And uh, the lady gave her a piece of candy, and Maddie looks at her and goes, you're welcome. And it's just the cutest thing, right? Um, but... What's interesting about it is, is that lady then looked at my daughter and she's like, wow, she's so special, right? I was like, oh, thank you, whatever. Because she realized that she didn't know what it meant, right? She was trying, okay? So, you're welcome. Um, pretty much everyone that night understood what was going on. But I want to pose this to you. I think a lot of times with God, we're in that same place of trying to figure out what does thank you and welcome mean with God, when I, got when I tell God, thank you, what does that mean, right? That's what we're talking about, this thankfulness. We're still trying to figure out spiritually what does it mean to say thank you to God sometimes, right? Just like Maddie's trying to figure out what it all means. So it brought me to the question of, back to the beginning, you're welcome. What does that mean? Any takers? What does it mean to say you're welcome? You're welcome to ask again. Very wise, very wise. Uh, what's another way to say you're welcome? Connor, you say it all the time at work. What do you say instead of you're welcome? My pleasure, My pleasure right? Which gives me no more clarity on what that means. My pleasure. There it is. Beautiful. So when somebody says thank you, you can say, of course. Okay, of course. So there's lots of ways to say you're welcome. But what does it actually mean? That was the question. So... Of course, Caitlin, being as smart as she has, has kind of hit it. So, oh, is it up there? Ah, oh, see? Okay. So, you're welcome. What it actually means is you're welcome to ask me to do it again. Right? Which, when I read that, I was like, that's crazy. That's kind of like, if I give somebody a kidney and they say thank you, I'm not going to say you're welcome. Right? You know what I mean? Like, like I'm not going to be like, I'll do that again, you know? Uh, <laughs> I thought that was interesting, right? Because we're telling, we tell some people, thank you all the time. We say you're welcome, like it's no big deal, right? We joke around with it. When I do something for somebody and I'm like, you're welcome, right? Like, I have nothing. I've never thought past that. I don't want them to ask me to do that again. You know what I mean? Like, I help somebody out with a favor and, they, and I say, you're welcome. Like, I'm not going to, don't, please don't ask me to come lay tile at your house again, you know? Like, so anyways, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. So what it really means there is, like I said, you're welcome to ask me to do it again. So what does that mean for God? Right? If I tell God, thank you, do you think he's going to say you're welcome? Right? When we ask God for something out of a place of thankfulness, he is a God of you're welcome. Or, in translation, to not be so confusing, he says, not only did I do it for you this time, but I'm willing to do it again, right? 
it's a two-way street. When I'm in a place of thankfulness, I understand because I have a relationship with me. He's going to say, not only am I going to do it for you this time, Andrew, I'm willing to do it again and again and again and again and again, right? So back to that verse, Philippians 4, 4 through 7. When I have that new perspective of God saying you're welcome or I'm willing to do it again, let's see what it says. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank, you, thank him for what he has done, right? So I say, thank you to God for what you've done, past tense. And it says, then you experience God's peace. How do I get peace? Because I know that God is a you're welcome kind of God. He's done it for me in the past, and he's saying, I will do it again. That's what brings peace to me, personally. We're talking about my, my thought on thankfulness tonight, is when I'm thankful to God, and I thank you for what you've done, I know that he's willing to do it, and he's willing to do it again. That's what brings peace, right? It's that relationship. Make sense? Following me? Tracking? Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at a different verse to talk about who God is to us sometimes. So it says in Hebrews 13, 5 through 8, it says, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. What's he saying there? I'm a God that was there for you, and I'll be for there for you again. So I can say in confidence, the Lord is my helper, so I'll have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Remember your leaders taught you of the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow their example of faith. Jesus Christ is the same today, tomorrow, forever. Right? He's a consistent God. He was there for you once. He'll be there for you again. So, we talked about thankfulness. We talked about your welcome. Now let's talk about what's the season we're in right now. Christmas! No, Thanksgiving, right? So in a season of Thanksgiving, the concept of thankfulness comes up a lot, right? You see it on little pillows at Hobby Lobby and little signs on the side of the road. Be thankful, right? And it always makes me laugh because, because in America, we're talking about thankfulness is we only focus on it this one time a year, right? We don't live in this, in this place of thankfulness. So as Christians, not only have we been called to be thankful at Thanksgiving, we've been called to live a life of thankfulness, right? We don't get away with just being thankful for a weekend a year and telling people how thankful I am for my Uncle Betty, for Uncle Ben, for <laughs> giving me all these cool toys, right? <laughs> for, whoa, for rice. Uncle Ben's rice, yeah. Uh, th thanks, Uncle Ben. <laughs> So the last point I want to talk about is Christians, we've been called and are held to a higher standard of being a person not to give out of what I have, but to give, not to give out a heart of I want to. And not, ah. As Christians, we're called to give not out of a heart of I have to, but out of a heart of I want to, right? So it says in Colossians 3, 12 through 17. So in the context of this verse, we're talking about new believers and what they should look like and how they should live their life, right? So it says, since God chose you to be a holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love that binds us together in perfect harmony. And let peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of the body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Yeah. Uh, let the message about Christ and all of its richnesses fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, listen to this, do it as a representation of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. All that being said, it's talking about what your life should look like for others. That's what we're talking about. Being thankful and sharing that thankfulness with others, right? When people see us, they should see us, as it says there, as a representation of the Lord right? And another verse in 2 Corinthians 9, 9 through 15, uh, just to kind of paraphrase it here, it says, uh, 
They gave freely and generously to the poor and did good deeds and remembered for that. So then it goes down verse 11. It says, yes, you will be enriched, enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank you. So two good things will result from the ministry of giving. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met, and they will joyfully express their thanks to God. As a result, your ministry will give them glory to God for your generosity to them, and all believers will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ, and they will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace God has given you. Thank God for the gift, too wonderful for words. So when you give to others in this season, or in any season that we're called to, right? Not only does it bless that person, but it forces them to see the God inside of you and cause them to be thankful to God. That's what, we're, that's what we're talking about, is sharing the thankfulness of God, right, in this season. So the question I have for you tonight to leave you with, if you followed me through this whole message is, are you a person... Be a person of your welcome, right? Do you follow what that means? Be a person of your welcome. So don't just be willing when somebody says thank you. Know that you're saying that not only will I help you in this time, but I'm willing to do it again, right? That's the true heart of thankfulness is when I'm not doing it as a one-time favor. Now, the kidney thing's a joke, right? But as a Christian, I'm called to help others in this season and all seasons, all year long. But be a person that is being thankful throughout the whole year and saying, hey, I'm willing to help you, and I'll do it again. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word, and we thank you that uh, you are such a good follower to us, and we know that we can trust you, and we can be thankful for what you've done for us because we know that you'll do it again. It's so encouraging in this time where we don't really know what's going on and, and all this COVID stuff and all these things that are shifting and moving. We know that you are there for us. It says you're there for us today, tomorrow, and forever, never changing. And we know that you are our constant, and that's why we are thankful. That's why we live in a, in a place of peace is because we know you're there for us. We just ask that you would help us to be more like you in the fact that we are, are being thankful and giving out of a heart uh, that is like yours. And we just ask you to be with these kids as they go and have this Thanksgiving time and have this break. And they can just reflect on the fact of uh, we have so much to be thankful for, but let's not miss out on the fact that being thankful, uh, we have to look and see what is God doing in our lives. It's not just what we've been given. It's not about the circumstances around us. It's about just being thankful for who you are in our lives. We just thank you. We love you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen.